loss of talent. Uh, there is a concern about the uh, uh, exodus of people, uh, exit interviews and so on. And many of the exit interview analysis bring out this. And there is a uh, humorous kind of saying in industry that the HR function recruits the people and the bosses lose them uh, in the way in which they handle uh, this talent. So uh, uh, practicing dharma alone will become more and more difficult if the person is an island of dharma. I think he should work as a change agent and percolate this dharma around him. And the wider the circle, the stronger uh, the pursuit of dharma. Now, uh, uh, this applies at the world level as well. Uh, around 1990, I was very confident after the Soviet perestroika by uh, Gorbachev uh, restructuring and the glasnost openness, dismantling the USSR, uh, in, that the world was now at peace, a long period ahead of peace. Uh, something like the Second World War is most unlikely to happen. 10, 15 years later, I'm not so sure. Uh, and I think in the 21st century, there is a great danger that we may see a third world war, which will be very destructive, or at least there is a possibility of an Asian war. So unless the United Nations, the EU, the Paris Climate Agreement, many of these multilateral systems follow the Dharma and restrain member countries like North Korea, Iran, Saudi, Iran and Saudi Arabia are behind the conflict in Syria and Yemen. It is a Shia-Sunni fight that is taking place. And the rest of the world can be get dragged into it. So, uh, what Angela Merkel and Macron are trying to do in Europe is to also bring in some kind of dharma and restrain states like Austria, Hungary, Poland from going extremely towards the right and fascism. Uh, so there could be pralaya. Uh, there could be a lot of damage in India. Uh, but uh, dharma has to come from the citizen, uh, organization, national and global levels. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, it is possible, it is doable, and the rewards are immense at multiple levels, adequate financial, and much more in terms of psychological and spiritual satisfactions. And I'll throw it open to your comments and questions. Thank you very much. Do we have mics as usual to pass around? Yeah? Anyone welcome to disagree that this is unrealistic, this is romantic, idealistic, uh, <laughs> not possible in this Kali Yug? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, please. Rohit, I thought you were going to ask the first question. That would have been a bouncer. You after, should. After, yeah, you okay. should. No, no, no. Okay. Huh. So, uh, um, thank you for the presentation first. Um, when you try to define sustained career success, uh, you defined it um, using uh, everything that is external to the individual. You talked about leadership, which means you would need followers to acclaim you as a leader. Uh, competition, uh, you talked about the employer, your juniors, and other organizations. So all these are external to the individual. So is dharma n not an internal concept? It's what the rest of the world... Yeah, I think that's a good comment. Success is not what you imagine it is. Success is what is acknowledged by people around you. So you may have a self-image which is partly biased. We normally have this human problem that we are always critical of others and not so critical of ourselves. But the reverse will be actually more useful for us, self-criticism and looking at the positive side of others. So the career is defined by the perceptions of your role set, people who are around you uh, in the organization, in the community. To, uh, for you to uh, really uh, feel internally justified that even if some of them praise you and some don't, uh, you, you will have to see how your own internal dynamics has worked. So you, 
what you do is the process, the input, success is seen by the others and acknowledged by the others, verbally, non-verbally, formally, informally. Yeah, that is your image, reputation, kirti. Uh, you can influence it, but you cannot control it. That is the idea. So you may claim that you are following dharma, but they have to see it done and confirm it as well. Yeah? But that makes it highly subjective, isn't it? Uh, what is subjective? The definition of success itself. Definition of what? Of success itself. No, we can define it in various ways. Uh, success is those three together. Dharma, Artha, Kama. Doing all these three together in the right way. So this question comes up everywhere I debate Dharma. Relativity, it depends. No, it doesn't depend. Dharma is clearly defined. Dharma is what is good for the organization, what is good for the team, and finally what is good for yourself. So success is clearly defined in financial, psychological, social terms. So we can measure. As long as you use the same scale and measure 100 people's performance, 100 people's performance, 1,000 people's performance, we can rank them in order of success. So the, 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 there's no, where you want success, that is subjective. You may want to succeed in music, in art, uh, in sports, or in business, or in government. But once you have chosen your field, then success parameters are very clearly defined, universally understood. The organization defines them for you. There's no confusion. Yeah. Uh, does the definition of success also extend to the definition of dharma? Uh, but yeah, is that, no, no. Is that also the, relation, the relationship is, to repeat once more, yeah. Dharma is a route to success. Yeah, no, no, you mentioned that very clearly. Ah. My question is, isn't Dharma itself subjective? Because you No, look, Dharma is not subjective. You look to uh, any the, text. The, we have clear definitions of what is the Rashtra Dharma, Raja Dharma, Sangatana Dharma, Vyakti Dharma, Vishesha Dharma, for any situation. What happens sometimes you, in life you, is what, what, find this? Listen, listen. Yeah. what happens sometimes is what is in your mind, you are not able to put it across, dharma sankat. Two dharmas compete. Dharma to myself, dharma to my family, dharma to... Whenever two dharmas compete, dharma sankat, there is a clear answer, the higher dharma will prevail. For example, if there is an international problem, the dharma of all Indian political parties is to unite and take a common stand. If you are discussing internal uh, economic issues and problems, they can differ. Uh, but once within the party, if somebody is a member, then he has to follow the dharma of the organization. So similarly, in the company, in the industry, there must be fair competition. That is dharma of the industry. But the industry together cannot prevent government from having imports, new technology, new entrants, they will come, because that is what the dharma of the customer. So the, there is no clash between the two, and dharma it can be defined whatever the level. So uh, if you take the family, uh, you as an individual may want to do something, but the family welfare demands that you take responsibility. Then for some time, you should give that priority. Once you have discharged it, you come back to your personal dharma. So the rules, rules are quite clear. There is no escape route. There is no slippage. All doors are closed. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, one last question, if I mm. may add. Mm. Is there a manual of dharma? Because Yes, yes, there are. There are. If you want to read, there are, uh, uh, let me just mention two examples. Professor Kale has written four volume Dharma Shastra, if you want to read it. And Vidura Niti in the Mahabharata, the conversation between Vidura and Yudhi, uh, the, Dhritarashtra at the end of the war, or the peace negotiation, yeah? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Did you introduce yourself? Oh, no, I didn't. Ah, there was a question here, yeah, Ramu, yes. Can you give me a so, simple definition for Dharma? Uh, the, uh, very, very simple one is, uh, do what is right. Do what is righteousness, ethics, values. All these point to Dharma. Uh, dharma is that which uh, will cement, bond, the organization, the society, the family together, will not split them. So dharma can be defined as responsibility. Uh, goodness. goodness, yes. All these are elements of dharma. Yeah. Ah.
and, and regarding, regarding success and all, even leading a dharmic, dharmic life is success. That's you life, life you success. Don't, you don't expect promotion or uh, career progress at all. Living dharma is success, by itself success. It gives a lot of satisfaction. And others will follow. Professional success will follow if you follow dharma. It will come. Competence in dharma will ensure that you progress. So you don't have to look for some benefit from dharma. Dharma itself is a benefit. Karma, like last Krishna says, karma, doing karma is benefit. Karma palan is not a benefit, really. You try to learn to enjoy a dharmic life. That's enough. You are, you are even more ambitious than I am. <laughs> I am trying to sell dharma through the attraction of career success. You are saying that dharma by itself. That is true. Ultimately, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. So extending that a bit further. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, here, here is a question there. Huh. Huh. Uh, yes, who is uh, who, whoever is speaking, please complete your question. Uh, I'm Mrs. Jagannathan. Uh, first of all, thank you for the wonderful speech. I've learned a lot. Uh, now, uh, taking off from what uh, uh, Sir over there uh, said, says, right, uh. Uh, what happens when you are trying to follow dharma in an organization, while most or maybe some of the people around you are not? There is a clash. And often what happens practically, I'm not talking about theoretically, is the people who follow a dharma do go ahead at least short term. Mm -hmm. And that uh, it's just a good, motivates it's a good a person. question. It's a good question, and, and that comes from a number of young people. I have faced this several times. OK, this, this is a real uh, dharma sankat for you. You want to follow dharma, and many others don't. OK. We may I, have personal I, I have the, satisfaction. I, I, have the, I have the following suggestions. Every one of us must be an ambassador for dharma, yeah, yeah, an evangelist for dharma. And wherever we see a chance of success, we should engage in Dharma Yudh. I have seen many managers who were very keen on quality, and the company did not have a quality culture. And they campaigned with the management in a nice constructive sort of way, brought in uh, quality systems, training, manuals, consultants, created a gradual swing in opinion. This is, this is a management of change. That means a person following Dharma must also act as a counselor, educator to people in a nice friendly way, pointing out to those who will listen. Some will listen, some will not listen. Exactly. So there may come a point where you have made your best efforts to convert the organization to dharma. Then at that point, if it doesn't work, you leave it. You look for another organization which is more supportive of dharma. But still don't give up on the previous organization. Your effort will not go waste. Sometime after you have gone, they may still, some others may pick up what you are saying. In other words, we have two choices. We can also follow the dharma of the others, or we can continue to be convinced on dharma. Okay. The second is the course to follow. Thank you. Yeah. So many of, very often people use as this as an alibi that some of the others are not following in the organization. That is not uh, an acceptable alibi. Yeah. Please introduce yeah. us. Sir, I am Hare Krishnan. Ah, yes. Thank you for your enlightened speech. One simple question, is dharma possible in the society where there is inequality? The butcher's dharma and shepherd's dharma, a sannyasi's dharma and grahastha's dharma, the advocate's dharma and justice's dharma. <laughs> 